So this is gonna be one of those uh, how-to learning tutorial videos. Uh, what I wanna go over specifically is how to properly holster a hammer-fired gun, regardless of whether it be double action, single action, double action only, single action only. There, there's a lot of tips and tricks out there. More or less, I just wanna throw my hat into the bag. Um, I get asked this all the time, why I holster the gun in the manner that I do, uh, especially when I'm teaching new shooters, most of whom are usually running Glocks or Smith & Wesson M&Ps, SIG 320s. So I, I just want to show you guys why it is I do what I do and the reason for it. So I've got a little variety of uh, um, hammer-fired guns here, a couple of Berettas, and one of my newest purchases, which I'll show you shortly. Um, but yeah, let's let's just get right into it. So getting into the doctrine behind a double action, single action style of firearm is the rule of thumb is that the gun itself, so the very first trigger pull that you pull on any double action style of firearm is a heavy, long pull. The idea behind that is it's deliberate. Like, like you can never make the argument, oh, I accidentally pulled the trigger. It's designed as to be heavy, long, and deliberate. Any subsequent follow-up shot the hammer is cocked, which means, generally speaking, the trigger pull is cut in half, and the distance traveled is cut into a, about a third. So that, that's the idea behind it. So any follow-up shot is rapid, quick, and accurate. <clears throat> now, when you go to load a style of firearm like this, the proper way to do that with a double-action, single-action style of gun, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you here. Grab a little snap cap. So regardless of what the application is, so whether it be you're you're at competition, you're uh, you're just at the range, you are doing uh, uh, you're, like for carry, whatever the case may be, the doctrine behind it's always the same. So you'd load it, and now for those of you, if you press check or do whatever things, you press check it, make sure it's actually loaded. Yep, it absolutely is. All right, so now we've got the gun in a cocked mode. Now for a gun like a Beretta ninety two, uh, PX four Storm. Uh, Variants of the SIG 320. Um, there's lots of guns that have a decocking mechanism. So what you'd do is you'd activate your decocker. So in this case, uh, this Beretta, it's a decock only. So it doesn't have a safety. I don't need to worry about a safety. <clears throat> there are variants out there with a safety. So if that's the case, it would turn on and you'd have to manually turn it back off. But now the gun's in its double action mode. So when I go to holster this, the proper way to do it is you want what's called positive uh, positive pressure on the on the slide, which is going to create negative pressure on your thumb. So what do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> the rule of thumb with holstering a gun, or the rule of thumb with firearm safety, don't touch the trigger. All right. The entire theory behind holstering a gun: if you don't touch that trigger, you're never ever 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 going to get into trouble. This will get you into more trouble than anything else will. So the basic rule number one is keep your finger off the trigger. Don't touch it. Okay. The only time you're touching that trigger is when you're shooting something. Other than that, don't touch it. Don't look at it. Don't think about it. Don't do nothing. Now, just as a point of reference, when holstering a gun, it's a good idea to have what I like to call an index point. So there's a certain spot on the firearm that you should memorize that will keep you in what I call a safe position. So in my case on the 92s is this button right here. So anytime I, I'm manipulating the firearm, my finger goes right here. It goes in between the slide and in between the takedown button. So if I do that, okay, it's tactile. I can feel it. I know my finger's in the right place. So that to me is my index point. That's where I keep myself safe. Now, part number two of holstering the gun. So at this point, I'm doing my part, not touching the trigger. When I go to actually holster it, now, the style of holster doesn't matter. It doesn't, the, the doctrine's the same. It doesn't matter if it's uh, like a range holster like this, uh, a duty holster, like a safari land holster like that, or uh, a ghost competition holster like this. It doesn't matter. It's always the same. And what you do is you put your, your thumb on the back of the hammer and then you, you would holster. Now, the reason for that is where we get into negative pressure. So I have positive pressure because I'm forcing the gun into the holster and it's not pushing the slide at a battery because some people like their holsters really tight. And I've seen it, I've seen it a dozen times where somebody holsters their gun and you watch, it ends up going like that and you actually see the gun at a battery. So when you holster it, thumb goes like that. Now there's the main reason for that is if part number one, so if you're, if you're doing this, all right, there's been numerous recorded instances, and I'm not gonna specify the agency here in Canada, where they've been using Glocks, they holstered their gun, and the guy did that, all right? Gun went bang, all 
All right. The Glock, and now the Glock, it's a great gun. It did what it was designed to do. It went, it went bang when you pulled the trigger. The problem was, is it doesn't really account for human error. All right. So uh, as, as safe as the gun is, the human aspect is not. So why I like the double action, single action style of guns, because I can do this. So even if I have bad trigger control and I do that, I have to fight one inch of trigger pull. And in this case, it's got a dehammer spring in it. So it's eight pounds of pressure to get the gun to go off. Then I have them doing this. No matter what I do, this gun can't go bang. There's no way to get this to go off. I would, and, I, and I'm meaning this quite literally because my thumb is at about its max where it can go. If I actually did get this hammer to go back and fire, it would quite literally break my thumb. All right. So it kind of eliminates the variable. Now, if I did that, broke my thumb and fired, I probably did it intentionally because there's, there's absolutely no reason for that. But that's, that's the style behind it. So again, like I said, it doesn't matter the style of gun. So right here, I've got a PX4 Storm here. So with this bad boy, it's the same thing with the holster. It's just a matter that you have an added level uh, of retention. So I would I would load my gun, same thing, decock it, or like depending on the gun, sometimes you actually have to manually drop it, whatever the case may be. Thumb on, slide it into the holster, activate the retention, all right? That is the safest way to holster a double action, single action style of gun. Or let me rephrase that, sorry, uh, a firearm with a double action first trigger pull, or if it's a double action only. Um, but that's, that's how you do that. And then anytime I'm ready to go, I just draw it, hit the ALS and off I go kind of thing. The same thing goes for uh, competition style of holster. So these guys, same thing. It's basically anything that comes in contact with the trigger guard. Now, pretty much every holster out there is designed specifically to protect the trigger guard, not necessarily the entire firearm, but the trigger guard at a minimum. So it'll be the same thing when I holster it. I'm going to try and do this left-handed, but when I holster it, it's still the same thing. My thumb goes on the hammer and I click it into place and it locks. All right, there you go. So right now, as we can see, the trigger's protected, the trigger guard's protected. The entire firearm is not, but I've done what I as a user need to do to ensure that this firearm is protected and that the trigger is not touched uh, and it didn't go off. All right. Now there's a caveat to this. There are other style of guns that either ha have a single action only mode where the hammer's cocked, where you just click the safety on, right? So that's like your 1911 style. So it's a, um, you know, I, I'm, if you don't know what a 1911 is, you're probably in the wrong industry, but more or less you would do it like that. So the question is, how do you holster a gun like that? You know, what's, cause I, I can't exactly put my thumb on it to, to bring it forward. This one's a little bit different than some people um, think. Some people, what you'll see, actually, I'll just show you while I got it here, is some people, they'll take their 1911, they'll load it, and then what they'll do is they'll, they'll drop the hammer like this. Now, there's two reasons I don't recommend that. Um, rule no or number one is when you do this, there's always that chance that you're gonna pull the trigger before you get there and you're gonna have one of those seen that happen several times with, C, uh, with uh, like CZ-75s where some guy goes to lower the hammer because they don't have a decocker, right? You have to manually lower the hammer like this Beretta, for example, and they go do this. They pull the trigger and then they try and get their thumb there and you get bang. That's a, that's a DQ. That's how you get disqualified from a, a match. All right. Now, with a gun like that, uh, and, and sorry, and the other thing too with 1911s is if you, if you lower the hammer on a 1911, um, the, the gun doesn't fire. You can't, you can pull the trigger all day long. A 1911 is not going to fire with the hammer down because it's meant to be cocked and locked. And that's the next phrase we're getting into is cocked and locked. So my newest gun right here, my FNX 45 tactical, wrap your head around that one. Yes, I bought an FN. So a gun like this has got both options. It's got the option to carry it cocked and locked or double action only. So let's say I loaded it, did my thing, decocked it, and I holstered it. Now, this depends on uh, user configuration and how you choose to do it. A gun like this gives you a variety because what I could do is cock it, click the safety on and holster it, right? Now, how do you properly holster a single action gun? This one's a little more controversial on how you would do it. It's like, realistically, it all comes down to your comfort level. What I do now, I don't generally carry a gun cocked and locked um, for range use, whatever the case may be. I, I, I prefer a double action first pull. 
That being said, when you have a single action gun that can be carried cocked and locked, you would load it like you do. All right, so I've loaded it. I'm gonna turn my safety on. Now, once the safety's on, again, it disables the firearm. The biggest thing I always teach new shooters, and you gotta remember this, a firearm is a mechanical device. Mechanical devices can fail, all right? A safety is one of those you always use it, you never, ever, ever, ever rely on it, all right? Because I'm I, like Murphy's Law, you know, what can happen will happen. So eliminate the variable. Keep that finger off the trigger. And that way, you know, if humanity happens, if some way, God forbid, that gun goes bang, even though you didn't touch the trigger, the safety was on, at least you're, you're following the right steps and hopefully nobody gets hurt, all right? Not the best saying in the world, but that's just the reality of it. So, gun safe. Now, how I holster a gun like this may be different than how you do. I'm simply just showing you an idea. So, when I go to holster it, what I'll do is I'll cock it, I'll click safety on, and I'll do the pretty much the same thing, but the opposite, is I'll wrap my thumb around it, and I'll hold my thumb under it, all right? So that way, if God forbid, again, I have bad trigger control, I pull the trigger, it's going to do that, and it's going to pinch my thumb, all right? That's realistically one of the safer ways to do it. I mean, it's going to hurt a bit. Like, that hurts. That, that is a very unpleasant feeling. But I know what's happening, all right? And the best part is, is if I do that and I let go of that trigger, most firearms will have like a half cock where the half cock will catch the hammer and stop it from going off. That's part of the safety features of these things. Again, always use it, never rely on it. You have to assume one day that's going to fail. But that's how I do it. So I'll do that. Or, sorry, cock it, grab it by the hammer, and I'll just, and I'll holster it. Same thing, and then I'll, I'll, activate the, I'll activate the retention on this gun. Or if it doesn't have retention, don't, don't worry about it. But it gives, you, it gives you the option. So that's, that's more or less how I would do things. Um, again, every, everyone's different. Every, everyone's got their own way of how the holster, draw, whatever the case may be. I'm kind of showing you the generic, if they've got a double action, single action gun, how to keep it safe. All right? Now... One more, we'll get into it. I, I wasn't really planning on it, but I got it out here anyway, so. is a striker fire. So, with a striker fire gun, obviously, you don't have a hammer. So, how, you know, how do you stop yourself from shooting yourself? Or, you know, how, how do you stop that bad, that bad trigger control? Well, you kind of don't. One of these is it really comes down to is just keep your finger off that trigger. I'm telling you, if you keep your finger off the trigger, you'll never, ever, ever, ever get into trouble. Just keep your finger off the trigger. Now, one thing you will, I will note is you'll see a lot of shooters do this. When they holster it, they still do this. Even with a striker fire gun, Glock, Sig, Beretta, Smith & Wesson, whatever, when they holster it, they still put their, their, uh, their thumb on the back of the slide. Now, why? Well, uh, very few guns out there, they actually have aftermarket options where you can change out the back plate and you can make it that if you put pressure on it, it'll disable the striker. Um, I don't really like that idea, but it is out there. The reason you see people do that is for holster retention. So some people have their holsters too tight, where, like I was talking about earlier, where if they go to holster, it'll actually push the slide out of battery. All right. So what they'll do, just put your thumb on that, keeps the gun in battery as you holster the gun. More or less, that's it. Uh, holstering a striker fire gun as a technicality is simpler. Um, in some eyes, it's not necessarily a safe, but again, it comes down to you as the user. If you're doing your part, the gun will do its part kind of thing. And the holster, again, will do its part in terms of protecting the firearm and the trigger mechanism. But that's, that's more or less how that is. Uh, if I sound a little drained, it's because I filmed three videos today. I've had just about enough of this. So uh, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for watching, and I will see you all next time.